You've got to understand what eternal life is and what resurrection is. It's not just something spiritual, oh, you're going to be in a dreamy place in heaven, floating on clouds and, <laughs> and or having angels' wings. No, you and I rise from the dead as we are recognized. And I can prove it to you because if you look, when Jesus was on the Mount of Transfiguration, who did the disciples see with him? Moses and Elijah. And I want you to understand, when Jesus rose from the dead, who was it? It was the physical body of Jesus. And you remember, uh, all the disciples believed in it except Thomas. And I love Thomas for this one thing. He, he said, I, how can I believe that you are the Jesus that we spent all these years with? And he said to him, just reach out your hand and put your finger into the wounds. So the Jesus that actually rose from the grave still bore the marks of the spear in the side and of the nail prints in his hands. So it was so much the physical Jesus. And that's why Paul says, what power? I, I want to know that power because I want to rise from the dead. And you know, the, the joy of my life is this. Not that I live for 90 years or uh, hopefully 100, 120. Although somebody says I change my name when I, I get to 120 from Moses to Noah. But <laughs> that's just a joke. But the fact is this, that yes, I believe in a literal physical resurrection. But to me, the whole of my life is for that. You know, everything is simply by faith in Christ to know that. And Paul says, and this is the thing that I referred to a moment ago, is he says that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings being conformable to his death. In other words, experiencing a death experience if by any means I might attain to the resurrection of the dead. So the whole of, of Paul's experiences here in Philippians is he's no longer a young man, by the way. He's no longer a young man. And he's saying, I simply want to attain to this, that I might be able to experience not the pain and the suffering of this mortal body. And by the way, your resurrection body won't be crippled. It won't be, there'll be no pain, no cripples. <laughs> the blind will see, the cripples will walk in the kingdom of God, I can tell you. That we simply want to have that resurrection body. And then he goes on in verse 12, he says, I haven't already reached this. And he uses the word, I, I, I'm not already perfect, but I follow after this in faith, believing in faith, that I may receive that for which I have received in Christ, this eternal life, this eternal salvation. And you know, it brings me back to the main theme of the message of Jesus. The main theme of the message of Jesus wasn't just forgiveness of sin. Oh, yes, it was. But it wasn't just forgiveness of sin. The, uh, I, I, I'm quite shocked when I, when I look into the Gospels and the story of Jesus. The main theme of the message of Jesus was the kingdom of God, the future, resurrection. And that's why Jesus was quite prepared to suffer and die on the cross because he knew that there was life beyond death that there was a resurrection coming. He knew that he would rise from the dead. He knew that he would receive an eternal life and would never die. And can you imagine? We can never die. That eternal life means forever and ever and ever until we're totally absorbed. I won't go into the final details. Totally absorbed into God because we become the bride of Christ. And he goes on in verse 13. I count not myself to have already received that this one thing I do, forget those things which are behind. 
I'm reaching forward to those things which are in front. So the closer Paul got to death, the more that he forgot the past and all that he's done, he was already seeing and beginning to live in that eternal life. And I want you, as you listen to me, I want you to realize that whether you're in suffering, in pain, or whether you face death, that is only a looking forward to eternity, looking forward to resurrection and to the new life in Christ. So I want to forget the things that are behind. I don't want to go on talking, you know. It's too easy for old men to talk about the past, but I'm young enough to talk about the future. And if you talk to me for long, I'll tell you what the future is. I'll tell you now, I'm going into a new mission field in Asia. I'm going to go back into the Ukraine. I'm looking forward to going back into the Ukraine this year. Yes, and celebrating the, the, the final victory in Ukraine, and I'm looking forward to evangelism. I'm, I'm looking forward because I believe my future is not behind me. My future is in front of me, and I'm so positive about this. And he goes on and he says, I press forward toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. And that's all I'm doing is I'm going on. You see, Paul describes it to running a race. And you get a prize if you complete the course. And what we've got to do is we're running a race. We've got to be faithful. We mustn't give up. We mustn't fall by the wayside. We've got to finish that course. And whatever it is that God has given you to do, go on doing it until you die or until Jesus comes back. Come on. It's going on. It's finishing it. <laughs> it's a joke amongst married people that women usually, their accusation of men is they start jobs and never finish them. <laughs> That's not our spiritual experience. And I'm determined. I've started a job. I began running this race towards Christ. And I will not give up until I get the prize. And the prize, the reward is eternal life. That's the reward. Free from sickness, free from pain. Oh, how wonderful. An eternal life with Jesus. Living in paradise, living in heaven, living in the glory of God. If only we knew the glory and the blessing that is ours. So I echo the words of Paul. Don't look at what you have achieved. Look only to Jesus. Our salvation is only in Jesus, not by religious observance. I feel so sad when I look at people whose lives are just religious observance. I'm not religious. I hate religion. I love Jesus. He's my hope. He's my glory. And I'm going to meet you in the kingdom. Come on. If you trust in Jesus as I do, we're going to meet and stand together in the kingdom of Christ, together. I look forward to that meeting. God bless you.